This video is going to be focusing on section B of the unit one sample paper and we're going to be looking specifically at each individual question. So we're going to start with question 19. So question 19 is looking at ionisation energies and it is for elements with the atomic number 3 to 12. So we are looking at from lithium right through to magnesium. And you can see that we have a trend following here. So part A, we want to look at the equation for the first ionisation energy of nitrogen and we have to make sure to include state symbols. This part here is where most people lose their marks, where they forget about the state symbols. So we're going to write our nitrogen and the state symbol must always be a gas. And an ionisation energy is the removal of an electron. So we form nitrogen ion as a gas plus an electron. That is how we get our two marks. You get one mark for the formulas, one mark for your state symbols. And for part B, we have a four mark question here and we want to explain the changes in the first ionisation energy for the elements with the atomic numbers 3 to 10. So let's look at 3 to 10. In general, going from 3 up to 10, we are seeing an increase in our ionisation energy. So that's our overall trend. But you can see that we've got two anomalies here. We have an anomaly between elements 3 and 4, which is between beryllium and boron. And we also have anomalies between 7 and 8, which is between nitrogen and oxygen. And we need to explain each of these. So we're going to break it down in our answer. Now, the way I'm going to write out the answer is in bullet points so that you can clearly see how the marks break down. Whilst you can use bullet points in the exam, I would recommend that you get into the habit of writing it out in sentences because this will be useful for when you do extended writing questions in Unit 2. But you won't lose marks for writing in bullet points. So pick what works for you. As long as you cover all of the points, how you choose to structure a short answer like this isn't too important. When you get to longer, more structured answers, like you find in the extended writing, then you have to worry about how you lay it out. So first of all, we're going to say what the overall trend is. So across the period, we get a general increase in ionisation energy. And we have to explain why that is the case. And that is because all of your electrons are added to the same quantum shell. And that is the second quantum shell. So there is no difference in where the electrons are being added. However, your protons are increasing across the group. So your protons are increasing, so that leads to an increased attraction. In other words, your electrons are being pulled closer to your nucleus, where the protons are, as you move from lithium right the way through to neon, because you're getting that increase in your protons. And that would get us the first two marks. Now we need to look at the second two marks, and that's identifying our anomalies. So between element number four and five, we're seeing a decrease in ionization energy. And the reason for this is because the electron is going into the 2p orbital. So we are using a 2p orbital and that has less shielding than the 2s, or you can say it is a slightly higher energy orbital, so it doesn't require as much energy to be removed. Now we look at the anomaly between elements 7 and 8, and we have to look at what the issue is here. Well, both of these elements have their electrons being added into the 2p orbital. So this time it's not to do with the subshell. What we are seeing though is that in 7 
the there is no pairing of the electrons whereas in it the electrons are now being paired in the orbitals and because the electrons are now being paired in the orbitals that then gives more repulsion we get a higher electron electron repulsion between the electrons and because of that it get, means it takes less energy to remove the electron so any dips in ionization energy like we see between the beryllium and the boron and the nitrogen and the oxygen we have to figure it out why and the first one is because we go from the 2s to the 2p Whereas the second one is because we go to paired from non-paired electrons. And both of these have a lower energy requirement in order to remove the electron. Because the paired and non-paired gets an increase in repulsion. Whereas going from the 2s to the 2p, you get an increase in the shielding or shielding being another word for electron-electron repulsion. So anything that causes electron-electron repulsion to increase causes a decrease in our ionization energy. And that's how we get the last two marks there. So we say what the general overall trend is and then identify any anomalies. And that gets us our four marks. And for part C, we want to explain why the first ionization energy of 11 is lower than that of element three. So in other words, we're comparing sodium to lithium. So sodium is in period three. It's got 281 and lithium is in period two. It has an electron arrangement of 21. So we can see that we have got an extra quantum shell. So in sodium, the outer electron is further from the nucleus because the outer electron is now in the third quantum shell as opposed to it being in the second quantum shell when it's with lithium. If it is in the third quantum shell and it's further from the nucleus this causes more shielding again that same thing causing this um, same pattern more shielding or more electron electron repulsion and this therefore requires less energy to remove the electron that's an eight mark question all focusing on ionization energy you can find the other questions to this past paper in the playlist for the unit one sample paper if you want to see questions 20 onwards